On behalf of AmWestEntertainment.com, I'm Joe Christovec, and it's time to take a look at Week 7 of the Dubai World Cup Carnival. And just a few short weeks ago, Pat Cummings was frolicking over the beaches of Dubai, and now, Pat, the latest rumor is you were seen snowboarding in the Trackist parking lot. Not only are you incomparable, you're also adaptable, my friend. Well, versatility is the spice of life. Uh, there's no doubt about that, Joe. You have to adapt to all changing situations, and right now it's a little snowy here in the States, but ready for uh, a sunny uh, and enjoyable day in Dubai on Thursday with uh, seven races, six of them thoroughbreds, lots of good action. And if, you dive want, into. and if you want more information on all that, obviously you want to watch about the next 18 and a half minutes of this video. And in addition to that, you can go to amwestentertainment.com for the comprehensive, the free pass performances, track his st uh, stats and charts, Pat's detailed analysis with the selections, and of course, most, most importantly, perhaps, the live streaming video for free on race day. Also, amwager.com if you're looking to dive into the pools, fan-friendly interface, advanced wagering tools, and the best player rewards program in the business. Pat, week six was one of the most enjoyable thus far in the carnival for me. Lots of great highlights, some rising stars, some old veterans in the spotlight, and some spectacular performances at that. Uh, it's the truth, Joe. Uh, we had a real treat in the Al Shindaga sprint with Ronaldo the Wizard winning, and he, again, he didn't make it easy. Uh, he was wide. He covered the widest trip. And he was coming from off the pace, but, you know, a really game Krypton factor. We made him the value play of the day last week, and gosh, he really offered the value at 13-1, to 1, and he really ran very well and almost was really was coming back on Ronaldo the Wizard at the end of that race. I thought it was an impressive performance from both Krypton Factor and Ronaldo the Wizard, and those two were kind of clear of... Uh, uh, you know, what might not have been the best group in the, in, in the lot, but uh, the, you have to beat the horses in front of you. And uh, those two managed to, to basically get themselves on top of them. And and uh, they will probably move forward from here to the Mahab Al Shamal on Super Saturday and the, the Dubai Golden Shaheen. And Tom Arcus, we were wondering if he could step up in class. And not only did he do so and pass the acid test, he did it with a flying colors, Mr. Cummings. Yeah, he did. Absolutely crushed him, bottomed out the field, uh, dueled, uh, really vied for early command, but had himself in front and then just absolutely pulled away. The race was marred by a weird incident at the start, and we'll talk about that uh, this week as Romanch bounces back, but it didn't impact Tamar Kuz at all, and, and he ran on to a very impressive performance. He's clearly the best miler on the dirt, and that, living up to the pedigree, as we suggested, he probably would. Well, in the guineas, Moth Tool turned the tables on move to Hedge. But if you go to Mike DeCock's website, he is not discouraged, basically saying that his horse came back at the end. He likes the added distance moving forward. Al Kia, UAE Derby, most likely on the schedules for both of these horses. How impressive was the race? How fast was the time? And how good are these two, Pat? Yeah, it, it was a fast race. Uh, and they have clearly just separated themselves as the two best three-year-olds that we've seen in the UAE this year. Uh, they're definitely the fastest. Uh, no question about that. I don't know if we're going to see them both back in the Albastakia on Super Saturday, but it looks like Muptahij will come back, and it looks like he's going to enjoy getting over extra ground. You know, he, he may have kind of gotten the slip on the field and gotten a favorable pace set up in the Guineas trial, which helped him win, and Maftool missed the kick. Maftool puts the blinkers on, comes back, runs very well, uh, better than maybe we had thought, but uh, Muptahij didn't do much over the 1,600-meter trip when he won his maiden either. So those races kind of looked – I think the Guineas trial was maybe more the aberration uh, than, than the absolute case. He looks like he wants to go farther. That's what he looked like when he won his maiden. Impressed by both of them and looking forward to seeing both of them as we move on. Not sure if we'll see both on Super Saturday, but expect at least Muptahij. In World Cup news, Juan Tani, better known as Ron the Greek to all of his North American fans, won again in Saudi Arabia. He keeps on going strong at the age of eight, and maybe a Dubai World Cup invitation is forthcoming for trainer Nicholas Bachelard. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any question that that will be coming in. 
Uh, very impressive seven-length win in the King Abdullah Cup, defeating a field of 16. There was a spill in the incident, and right. our thoughts go out to uh, the connections. Uh, jockey Eddie Castro, I know, was uh, was injured. He's coming back. Uh, wasn't injured terribly, but certainly some pain and, and a small hairline fracture was the report. Uh, jockey Mohammed Saeed, best of thoughts to him as well. It was really a, a, a disaster to, to witness it live. But uh, take nothing away, Ron the Greek just rolled them. He absolutely crushed them. He'll have the week off and is due to come back uh, back in the training uh, on Sunday and hopefully uh, on to the Dubai World Cup where he adds uh, a very uh, intriguing wrinkle into the race, uh, coming back to Dubai, getting on dirt, uh, right. so hope he makes it. Right. Obviously, he had a terrible post last year, and the synthetic to Peter Racetrack probably didn't pay in, uh, play in his favor either. Pat, let's move on to what is upcoming, and that is Thursday, February the 19th, sixth throw, but races. Week 7 of the Dubai World Cup Carnival post time will be at 10.20 U.S. Eastern Standard Time. And the featured race, the sixth event, the $200,000 Balanchine, a group two race for the females, 1,800 meters on the grass. But before we get to that, let's take a look at race number three. You mentioned Romanche earlier. He's coming back on a week's rest. He looks to be in a winnable spot here at odds of 6-1 to one in your morning line in the Maidan Sobha. But the morning line favorite in this race at odds of, what is it, 4-1 to one is Hasek, the number one, drawing post position number 10. So we have two big dirt handicaps on this card. Uh, it's a turf-heavy program, four turf races for thoroughbreds, two on the dirt, and they're phenomenal races, Joe. Yep. They they give us a, kind of the best of the year on dirt in these handicaps. And it makes it a very interesting card to see kind of who is, is going to step up in the spot. So Hafek is the morning line favorite. Uh, he has been proficient on this dirt surface. He is as consistent as they come without being a regular winner. Romanche is coming in off of a debacle last week in the fire break where he kind of got pinched out even reading the stewards report it wasn't very clear they couldn't assign blame to anyone in particular and just said to the jockey just kind of be careful but there was no absolute uh, fault that was assigned there and he took a bad step stumbled he actually uh, impacted number 14 busker he wheels back in this spot we have uh Horses that uh, locally have been very good and, and are taking a step up in the company. That's number 13, Lael, and number 15, Phil Phil, both of whom have run very well on the dirt. Lael was our uh, on-top pick last week, at least mine, and was just tipped off at the end by his stable companion, Giron, who was 19-1, to whereas Lael was 4-5. to So there was a big difference between those. So it looked like Lael was maybe loafing a little bit on the front end because he was certainly moving the best of anyone in that field. They add a visor, uh, which will perhaps focus him a little bit more. I think it's a positive change. Doug Watson was very keen on him last week. No argument for me that they wheel him back in a similar spot. Now that the key is here, he gets in at 56 and a half kilos as opposed to carrying top weight, which he did last week, which certainly may have impacted Giron coming back on him. Uh, so we get kind of these local performers in Lael and Phil Phil stepping up. Busker had an, a, what was essentially a non-effort last week, but he actually did run on to be sixth and had the fastest final 400 meters in, in that messy fire break. Romanche had a non-effort. Hathek is back on. We also have Yardline coming into this. He's coming out of Santa Anita. He was racing there without Lasix, ran on dirt, faced a couple really good horses on dirt in his maidens. He faced Chitu earlier last year. He faced uh, a bi uh, Big Casanova, who was a, uh, a solid dirt runner out on the west coast of America. The fact that he wasn't running with Lasix to me was a good sign that he was successful enough there. He comes in for Charlie Appleby. He is drawn in gate 12 here and will get blinkers as well, so I think he's going to be proficient Really amusing first dirt race of the day. I've actually sided with number 13, Leo. Uh, I think the weight, the visor, the quick wheel back, uh, all of them kind of go in his favor. He's drawn on the rail. He should get a good trip in this bulky field of 16. 
All right, pal. Let's quickly move on to race number four here, the Dubai Millennium Stakes, 200,000 U.S. We've got 2,000 meters on the turf, which is 10 furlongs, and the morning line favorite here, one of your more defined morning line favorites over the course of the carnival, 9 to 5 on Hunter's Light, calling out the solid second choice at 3 to 1. A race that I think only has about three or four horses that can really land a blow and we're going to look at the, the replays of two of them. Let's start with that favorite, Hunter's Light, Joe. Uh, came back in a handicap here at Maidan. Uh, was real step down in company for him. And in the all-blue silks of Godolphin, he just kind of rolled. Uh, he took this class drop uh, fully in stride. And now comes back in a race that's frankly relatively similar to what he faced uh, last time. Some solids horses that have been in and out of stakes look he wins this race very well uh he comes back i i see no reason to think that he can't move forward his biggest problem maybe putting back-to-back -back races together he hasn't done that for a while so he's going to be asked to do that now he clearly likes the grass so hunter's light is there calling out's a very interesting horse for david simcock his winless dating back to his two-year-old year that was the last time he had won no wins but in some very good company as a three-year-old so he's going to get plenty of attention and we'll talk more about him in the bankroll challenge but the other one to look at is number seven umgio no argument about how well he ran first up was last at the top of the stretch and, and as you see on the video i mean he just absolutely swallows up the ground runs down this field from last to first in the stretch impressive performance surprised i think just about everybody and how successful this this run was i wasn't a big fan of the collateral form out of this i don't uh, know if yeah if he it hasn't really shaped up all that well so i think umgio will get plenty of attention uh, on the tote but Hunter's Light is the one for me. I'm going to go so far as to make Hunter's Light the Amwager best bet of the day. I think he, he's maybe a bit of a standout in this field. All right, Pat, let's move on to race number five. And this is $150,000. It is the District 1. We've got some familiar faces in this event, including On Back, who has won two races in a row against large fields. La Berna Den, who is in extremely good form after losing to On Back three starts back, a win and a good third last out in the Mock Tomb Challenge. You've got other horses in here that appear to have a chance on paper, but to me, it probably comes down to these two. Can it be On Back from the rail on the lead, gate to wire, or will it be La Berna Den from just off the pace, somebody else? It could be somebody else, but as I mentioned when we talked about race three, again, you get these horses that have all been very proficient on the dirt coming back. And there is, of course, kind of this bifurcation of races. You have those that are in the camp of I'm back, how good was that race, versus those when Tulane won at 149 to 1 and the horses that were behind him. Uh, frankly, I have to suggest... I'm just going to toss the two-lane race altogether. I, those horses, to me, if you couldn't beat two-lane then, uh, he had some form that was close to Ron the Greek in Saudi Arabia that maybe we missed, but I, I just don't think there was enough excuses there for enough horses. Farrier had some issues on the rail. Let's go back to the I'm back race, though. His last start, his second win on the bounce here at the Carnival. He's going for his third win on Thursday. He leads this from go to woe. The horses behind him, Artigiano, he's now drawn in gate 11, so that could be possibly problematic. Storm Belt uh, is in this spot as well. He's kind of rear of the main group. Those are the three horses spotlighted. I'm back just straight on the rail, on the lead, all the way. He's drawn again in gate one, Joe. I think that's an absolutely massive uh, benefit for him. And, you know, while you may have wanted to look for other things, Artigiano was under a ride for 800 meters in this race. Uh, they put blinkers on him now, does Charlie Appleby. That's a, an interesting move. Maybe it will settle him more. Uh, and then you, we had uh, Stormbelt who, who ran on. He got shuffled back earlier. I know that was the horse we liked in that race. Mm -hmm. But uh, Artigiano uh, emerging out of this, have, having run a, a good run uh, there, actually covered a lot of extra ground. It brings us into the track of stat of the day. Artigiano covered 23 meters. It's about nine lengths more than on back. Now, on back was on the rail, but Artigiano was six wide going into the first turn, three to four wide on the second turn, covered all the extra ground, and still dug in there. I wouldn't say he exactly made a real winning impression to me. I don't know if he was ever going to win that, but he was faster than on back in there. 
But, but the problem to me is that I'm back has the rail again. Right. Henry Clay might be forced to go from the outside in gate 15, but for me, it's I'm back. I'm back. Back in the winner circle for the third time at the carnival if uh, it comes the way I, I think it might. So uh, I went 3-5-9 in the fifth. All right, Pat. Well, race number six is the feature of the day. It's a group two event, 200000 U.S. dollars up for grabs in the Balanchine. And back when we last saw her, we had – Clados, uh, Clado who was very impressive. She was really bet strongly. She was track steam. They kept talking about her on the in-house feed about how well she had been training and she lived up to that. She was awesome. Visually impressive. In my mind, she comes back at seven to five in this race against eight rivals. Can she be beaten? She was relatively unexposed coming into that race, Joe, uh, Alain de Royer Dupree, has not sent many horses to the carnival. He sent this one, and he picked up a year in which it, it, it seems like it's a fairly lackluster bunch, that, right. that a lot of these, that they beat up on each other in the Cape Verde, and all of them come back in the Balanchine, uh, more or less. I wasn't entirely sold on the performance. She crushed her competition. There's no question about that. I just don't know if she's good enough to do it again when you factor in a new shooter to the field. We'll, t- we'll talk about that horse in a second. Let's go back, catch the stretch run here of the Balanchine, uh, highlighting four horses. Clado Sarah, who's uh, on the outside here in the navy blue silks. Energy of Fribby has the yellow cab. Zariga in the white. Uh, she ends up running second. And Anahita in the light blue silks. It wasn't an impressive group coming into the Cape Verde. It's not an impressive group coming out of it. The only one I really want out of this is Clado Sarah. And Energy of Fribby, perhaps if they run longer, she seems like a, a, a filly that wants to go 2,400 or more. That's something that we've seen in her back form. No question about that. Look, impressive performance. Christoph Sumian back aboard. She stands out from the lot that she faced in that Phillies race. My question is, what about Susie Gold? Susie Gold is the Turkish import, second highest rated horse in Turkey, a winner of the top weight for eight rage in Turkey that was run at anchor. And we've got the video of that from YouTube. We'll go back and take a look here. Her only problem is that maybe she doesn't always race close to the pace. She likes to settle off of it, but in this small group, she's not going to be that far back. They're probably going to be a fairly compact lot. And Susan Gold beats the best horse in Turkey at this time. That was Blaze to win. He ends up running third or fourth in this particular race. She comes up, engages the leader, goes on, and lengthens away again at the end. Susan Gold, they've been pointing here for a while. I think the plan is to probably run here, come back in the Dubai City of Gold. She is a winner over a shorter trip, even though you see a lot of longer races in her back form. Susan Gold, to me, the new shooter is the horse I won in this race because I just have not thought much about the rest of the Phillies, Clado Sarah beat. So if Clado Sarah doesn't win, it's going to be Susie Gold, and I'm making Susie Gold my on-top selection and the Amwager value play of the day in the balance sheet. Very, very intriguing race because, as you mentioned, Clado Sarah was visually impressive, but what did she beat? If you beat a weak field of horses and look good doing it and then step up in class, then it's a much tougher task. We see this time and time again in any area of the world, in any horse race of quality. So it's an acid test for Clado Sarah. She's beaten many of these. How good is Susie Gold? That makes this race that much more intriguing. Okay, it's time for the selections. You can get the selections from Pat, myself, and Mackenzie Kirkerhead at DubaiRaceNight.com. Pat, here's the reveal, my friend. Yeah, so I went in the second race, the first thoroughbred event of the day. Number one, Medician Man. Uh, I liked uh, what he did first up. He won this race last year. Had a little bit of traffic trouble in that race uh, a couple weeks back. And now there seems like there's an awful lot of horses that want to go forward in this five furlong dash. So I went with Medician Man on top. We've talked about the others. And in the last race, we get kind of a, a fun uh, rematch between Anaerobio and Eastern Rules, and there's truly some animosity between these two. Shane Foley was right. suspended on Eastern Rules. Christoph Sumian was fined for yelling at Shane Foley after that race. 
Uh, so anaerobio and Eastern rules to duel it out in the finale, and I went with anaerobio. I have a feeling you might have gone the other direction, Joe. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting race for sure, particularly between those two. I went with Medician Man as well. Solid late run uh, in a needed effort, as you mentioned last time. The old-timer still going strong at a really good carnival last year. I took Romance. I really don't know why. That stumble at the start gets another chance. Meets a beatable field. Was in a lot tougher when he was first entered at the carnival. Hunter's Light looks like he makes a lot of sense. Class showed last out. Maybe a confidence boost after racing against really tough competition. La Bernadette, the arrow is pointing up. There's no question about it. Drops in from a good third in the Maktoum Challenge. I think he'll be right there again. Maybe turn the tables on Ambak, who we lost to earlier in the carnival. Cladicera, visually impressive enough for me. I'm going to go right back with her. And then Eastern Rules, a good second last stop behind Safety Check. Another horse who should be tighter for his second run of the carnival. Time for the Amwager Bankroll Challenge, Pat. Again last week, you made a slight profit. You had a trifecta with Ronaldo the Wizard on top of Krypton Factor with Speedhawk in third and Boom Shakalaka in fourth. That super paid three thousand. You got back a buck nineteen ninety five on your fifty cent try. And for the season, once again, almost a four hundred dollar profit through six weeks. Yeah, hey look, the typical betters uh, paradise is what could have been. You could be sitting on a beach surrounded by everything you want in the world and say, gosh, I wonder if there's any place better than this. Uh, stop wondering, enjoy it, and, and I'll take the profit. And look, hey, if we just get over, you know, all we need here is eighteen dollars and thirty cents to get over the top. For excuse me, not a, uh, we need uh, twenty-one dollars and thirty cents to get over the top for the season uh, to, to turn a profit here. That's what I want to do, and so we're going to start spreading here to, to just try and catch that. So we need to break a thousand dollars to be profitable for the carnival. I'm going to take ten dollars to win on Medician Man to start the day. Race four and race six are kind of the key plays. In the fourth, I'm going to start with a pick three here and use uh, Hunter's Light and uh, the other logical contender in there, uh, uh, whose name is escaping me at this moment, uh, calling out, and use them with uh, six horses uh, in that fifth race. And then we'll single to Sousa Gold and see if we can get Sousa home. Uh, and then we'll back it up, $8 exact to Sousa Gold, or rather, uh, yeah, Sousa Gold. Uh, on top of, uh, I'm getting this wrong, Hunt, that's Hunter's Light on top of Calling Out, and then uh, a $5 exacta Calling Out on top of Hunter's Light. Trifecta then, take those two, put them first and second, use all in third. And then a trifecta in the balancing. Now we can talk about the Phillies. I'll, I'll take one with Susie Gold on top of Clado Sarah for $3 and a $4 variety the other way around and take the leftover $8 and put it on Susie Gold to win. Hope the Turks have a big night at the carnival, Joe. My brother loves when you spread your wagers over uh, eight different uh, types of scenarios. Loves that. Loves the extra graphical work. He's shaking his head right over there right about now. All right, let's take a look at mine and wager bankroll challenge. I had a little bit of place money on Zahi. Tried to step out a little bit last week. Didn't work out so well. And I am playing catch up. That's for sure. Let's see what we can do this week. I also like Medician Man in race number two. Going to try some pick threes in race number five using La Bernadette. I'm back Storm Belt with Clado Sarah and Susie Gold with Anaerobio, Eastern Rules, and Dark Emerald. Then come right back with the same ticket but singling Clado Sarah in that second $1 pick, excuse me, in a $4 pick three. Then I'm going to go 30 to win on Clado Sarah and then with a cold exacta, Clado Sarah over Susie Gold. I'm banking a lot on Clado Sarah this week. We'll see what happens. Joe, Trying to get myself back in the race, Mr. Cummings. Joe, you don't get back in the race by putting $30 to win on seven to five shots. I need to show a profit. All right. We need to get our confidence back. Then we can move forward into Super Saturday. And don't forget, we double the bankroll on World Cup night to two hundy. So that's where we can make up quite a bit. <laughs> you're getting a little bit cocky. After my decimation of you last year. Hey, don't forget, uh, next week we have two nights right. of the carnival. So Thursday and Saturday, and that means double the pleasure, double the fun, double the Joe and Pat show. That's right, double the pleasure, double the fun. We'll have two shows next week, and then onward and upward to Super Saturday and eventually World Cup night, which is shaping up already as names start to trickle in, rumors start to hit Pat's cell phone via text of who will be participating. It looks like it's going to be a star-studded event as it always is. You can follow Pat and I on Twitter. Pat's at Dubai Race Night and Track is Racing. I'm at joeytokracing.com. For now, enjoy week seven of the Dubai World Cup Carnival. We'll see you 
twice next week.